You're muted, Josh. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Happy almost Valentine's Day weekend. Happy Lunar New Year. Happy, happy, happy all the way around. Uh, welcome to the uh, February 12th edition of the Friday live stream. We're so happy to see you and happy that all of you could join us. We're especially excited about today's episode because in our mid-year live stream PD feedback, uh, today's topic was the number one requested topic. So there you go. So to the 40 people who are currently watching, yeah, you made it on time. You're our favorite. Your prize is in the mail. Um, in any case, uh, so we just want to take this uh, reminder to remind you that uh, the Alice All Good Teaching Conference is coming up on the 26th, which is a Friday. We will not be having live stream PD that week. And also to say that the schedule is coming next week. I've been working on it. I will probably be working on it again Monday, possibly Tuesday, but it should definitely be out by next Wednesday. So you get to see what all sessions are going to be available. You can get to start planning um, and all that good stuff. So we hope that you're looking forward to it. I can tell you that there's some really awesome stuff presented mostly by um, your uh, Alisal colleagues uh, coming to this event. And um, I think it's going to be really good. It's going to be Alisal Presents Alisal, which is always a great event, um, whether it's the um, Alisal Technology Conference in the fall, or it's this event every spring. Um, just another quick reminder, as we say every week, um, if you need support, EdTech support, please don't email myself, George, or Celia directly. Please email edtech at alisal.org. Also, the live stream, uh, or not live stream, but the open office hours for help are Wednesday and Thursday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m bit.ly slash Alisal help. It is case sensitive there. So we're also excited that next week, um, our topic will be uh, building classroom community using storytelling featuring George and Celia from the tech de ed tech department from our department, but also featuring some special guests, but we're not going to tell you who they are yet. You have to tune in and find out, but they are Alisal teachers and they are tremendous some people I really admire. So, briefest intro ever. With all that being said and having nothing more to say in the introduction, I will now turn it over to George and Celia. So, here is where I pass the mic and pass the baton. Go ahead and take it over, guys. All right, thank you, Josh. Hopefully, you know, I can't see you, but hopefully you, everything's working out fine, the audio and the video here. So um, welcome everybody to this. I'm pretty excited about this PD. Like Josh said, a lot of you requested this. We know we have a new toy. It's like, how do we use it? And just a little bit, uh, take a little bit of time here just to let you know my experience with uh, Mac OS. Uh, when I came to the district, I had never used the Mac before. And um, you know, a certain teacher, hashtag Ben Cogswell, trained me pretty much just one-on-one -on -one how to use it. And I did not like it, but now I would never go back to a, to a to a PC. Anyway, so there's my little editorial there, how this came to be. And what happens in our district, a lot of times we get these devices and perhaps we don't get a uh, good introduction to um, to how to use the device. So hopefully this will help um, you learn how to use your Mac a little bit better. And if you've been using it and you're really well, uh, you really, um, you, you do this really well already, you're not, you know your Mac really well, um, that you will maybe pick up a few little tidbits, little tips on here that we're gonna try to share throughout the, throughout the, the live stream here. The if you want access to this slide deck, uh, it is uh, at bit.ly forward slash AUSD all capital and then Mac. So again, as always, when we are done with this stream, we will post it on our website so you will have access to these slides and the video, the recording of this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Our agenda today, I will be working on the first half of the agenda with you today, and then Celia will handle the second half. We're going to go ahead and cover four main sections you know, updates, how to keep your device updated, um, you know, how to work with your desktop and the interface. Uh, we'll talk about some settings that you might want to consider. And then we'll talk about some free apps and just, we won't be training. We just want to make you aware of those and quick little things that on how to use them. So um, we will be taking questions, any questions that you might have at the end of, um, of, our, you know, of our presentation here. So if you can start submitting those in and we will get them at the end, okay? So let's get started. Um, I'm in George. Yes, Celia, go ahead. 
I was just thinking in case anybody wants to like um, be looking at what we're talking about at the same time, you might want to, um, if you have it available, ha maybe log on to this, the live stream with a secondary device like your laptop so that you're following there. But if you want to also be like checking these things that like George and I are gonna be talking about, then you'll have your iMac also separately. You could do it in a different window or in another tab, but sometimes it's just nice to like have those two things separate. So in case you wanna be following along, it might be good to, to have the two devices or two windows, two tabs, so you, you don't have to keep like switching back and forth. Good tip, Sally, especially because now most teachers probably have two devices, right? So good tip. So um, let's get started here with updates. So with regards to updates, I wanted to let you know that if you want to keep up with the Jones Assist, there's two types of updates you need to be aware of. We have what are called OS updates. That's the operating system updates. And the operating system is just pretty much the environment in which all the programs and applications run. So those are really critical. Um, critical pieces of the, um, you know, of keeping your uh, computer updated. The second type of updates are applications or programs that you may have downloaded from the App Store. And these are the two symbols that you will see here when there's updates needed. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about, you know, how do you update these uh, and how they differ? Well, when you see this icon, um, you will click on it and it will just guide you through the update. However, if you do not see this icon on your on your dock, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more, then there's a way that you can check to make sure you're up to date. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and go to the top left corner where you see the apple. Okay, that apple is going to be very important during this training. So, you know, um, get familiar with it. And when you get in there, you will see this dialog box. And I want to let you know that, yes, I'm a little bit ahead of everybody. You know, that's me, uh, always beta, beta testing, which causes problems. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This will tell you what version of the operating system you are on, as well as some other information. And this down here will uh, share with you. And if you click software update, it will tell you whether your computer is up to date. It will walk you through it. Um, so there's not really. Uh, there's not really very much to do besides follow the instructions. Just know that when you do operating system updates, they can take some time. So don't do it if you're going to go into a meet soon. You probably want to do it once you're done with your computer for the day or you have at least a few hours where you don't need to use the computer. So just a little tip on there with regards to the operating system. Most of you are probably on Catalina, Mac OS Catalina. I have seen some that are older than that. And especially if you still have one of the old um, MacBooks, um, Yours may be, you know, maybe back even in Mojave or uh, or some other older operating system, and things start stop working the way they should if you do not keep your OS up to date. Okay. On the other side here, we have App Store updates, and again, these are just updates of applications you have to download it from the App Store. Now, there's a little asterisk here that tells you that if you um, if you are using this, you will need to log in. Um, you will need to log in with an Apple ID. So yeah, down here at the bottom, you'll need to log with an Apple ID. So um, you may not be able to update these unless you have an Apple ID and you know your username and your password. Um, so um, I don't, um, you know, if you need additional help with that, we can definitely help you during uh, drop-in office hours as to how to get that set up. But what happens here is you will see, once again, this little icon on here with, this tells me that there's four updates that are needed on my, um, on, um, Four applications that need to be updated for my uh, from the App Store, and when you click on that, it's going to take you to a dialog box that looks like this. And all you need to do is on the bottom left hand side where it says updates, you click there, and uh, it will take you to a screen that shows the update the apps that need to be updated, and you will have the choice to either update certain ones or you can update them all. And again, you want to make sure that um, you, you are not doing prior updates while you are trying to have when you're going to have a Google Meet, uh, you know, um, and, uh, right after or so forth, because you don't know how long that could take and how it'll affect the performance as you are working during remote instruction. And that is really all there is to know with regards to updates. Um, which takes us to our second section, which is desktop and interface. 
I want to talk about this before I go into this so that people are like, oh, you know, don't kind of start getting anxious on it. Remember, we are working here what what these computers are called personal computers. And uh, part of that personal is that each user can personalize them. So know that uh, we're mentioning certain things and showing you certain things, but your computer, because you may have made some changes, looks a little bit different. So I just want to prepare you for that. So if you see things different on the screenshots that we show, it's probably because you've uh, changed the interface or perhaps the look of your uh, of your operating system. All right. So this, when you see this, this is just called the desktop. And there's a few important things about the desktop uh, on a Mac that, uh, that I want to point your attention to. Number one is the menu bar. So this at the top is called the menu bar. And you know, um, there's two main parts to the to the menu bar. I would say the part on the left and the part on the right. Uh, I want to talk about the part on the left up here. Of course, we talked about this very important Apple icon on here, but then these pieces on here. So I wanted to point out that these will change depending on the on the app that you're using or the program that you're using. So I'll give you an example here. Take a look at my screen on here. You can see that I'm using Chrome and I have additional icons. I have history, bookmarks, people. So those are specific, uh, specific, uh, you know, um, I guess information about the application you're using. So yes, these will change depending on what you're using. Okay. On the other side of the screen, um, we have a lot of common settings and icons that um, some of you may you may have these up here, you may not. These actually, you have options of being of showing of them just being displayed here or not. So, in a little bit, when we talk about settings, um, you have the choice whether you want to have the Bluetooth icon here, so you can turn them off quickly, turn off Bluetooth very quickly. Um, if you want to have some of these, uh, you know, some of these icons displayed, you will have choice on there. So again, you may not see some of these, but these might also, um, you know, be things that are quick settings, quick access to your Wi-Fi, quick access to Bluetooth, battery, volume, those kinds of things. So those are um, that's the second part. And again, this could look different depending on what applications you are running or what you have that start up when you run. So that's the menu bar. On the opposite side at the bottom, and I know some of you have chosen, because you can, to move the dock to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side. That's also possible. So for me, I have it down at the bottom. And with the dock, I want to talk about uh, a few. There's also a few sections on the dock on here. Number one is we have this section. Notice that it's divided by, uh, by these lines here in the section. So here's section one, section two, section three. Um, and if again, if you're running an older version of, of, of the operating system, you may not have these lines. I know it was um, there in Catalina, which most of you are running. But I don't know if it was there in Mojave and some of those other um, some of those other older operating systems. So um, as I said, there's three main sections here. Uh, we have these are the apps that are currently um, these are the apps that are currently on your dock. And this you can change them, you can rearrange them by simply clicking and dragging them back and forth. You can right click and then remove them if it's an application you don't use. So you may just want to keep things here that are important to you. And again, everything on this side. On this, on the left side, can be edited except for the Finder. The Finder is always running, and just so you know, the Finder is a way that uh, the operating system locates files and things that belong to certain programs. Anyway, not to get too tech and geeky there for you, but that's what that is. Now, um, so that's the first section. Now, once uh, on the second section on here, the middle section, these are recently used applications. So that's what shows up there. Okay. And then we have this third section on here, which uh, you may be missing these two folders, but you probably your garbage can is there. And you know, whenever you see uh, trash in there, it means that you have something in there. So when it's empty, it means there's nothing to empty out. And just a little uh, a little tip with regards to the garbage, I believe just like Google, after a certain amount of time, it automatically empties out your garbage can. So if you've deleted something, it might and it's been less than thirty days, it might still be in there. So um, before we move on, I want I'm going to kind of ask you a question. I'm going to actually just kind of think about this. Take a look at my dock here. Okay. What do you notice about um, certain applications? Because the dock tells you which applications are currently running. And you know, for a long time, I didn't even realize or notice these little things. Think about that. Hopefully, you know this already. While if you take a look at my screen here, it doesn't look like I'm running any application. I don't have any windows open. That's correct. I don't have any windows open for any application, 
but I do have some applications that are still running. They are not shut down, even though there's no Windows open here. Finder, like I said, is always open. See the little dot below that? Chrome, the little, little dot below that, it's running. And then this application. So those three applications are currently running. So if you are finding yourself with your computer going slow or just not being able to run too many things, check how many applications you're running and maybe close the ones that you no longer need. OK. A uh, couple of a few little things like I talked about already. The little apple on the left-hand corner, that takes you to the Mac settings. On the bottom, bottom left is the Finder, which allows you to, you know, to search for programs and apps on your computer. And on the right-hand side on here, like I said, you probably have two folders. Now, some people may have chosen to remove them, either on purpose or by accident. So they may, those may not be there. This is my Documents folder. And this is my download folder. That's what the, the, with the arrow down. So um, that's why I have those located. And again, yours may look different, but that's how the doc, uh, you know, that's what makes, you know, this a personal computer that you can change it to however, you know, whatever meets your needs. All right. And so that, and that was the desktop, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and move on to more information with regards to the desktop on here. And I'm gonna talk about Stacks because Stacks is, uh, is a feature that's built into all Macs and it's relatively recent. Um, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to very quickly with two clicks, allows you to organize your desktop. So take a look here. Um, you've probably seen this, your desktop has probably gotten like this. I know mine gets like this with all these icons and folders left when I am working on projects, but with two clicks, it cleans it up. So take a look at this, it's like magic. And I'm probably gonna have to show it to you a couple of times here. No audio, but there you go. You see that? Pretty quick, right? One more time. And that happens in two clicks. And what it does is it organizes all your types of files into uh, groups. So you'll have a stack of PDFs. You'll have a stack of screenshots. You'll have a stack of uh, of, uh, of docs or whatever whatever applications. So it's really a cool, uh, cool feature if you're quickly wanting to clean up, uh, clean up your desktop, okay? So, um, that is a really cool um, thing that can help you, um, you know, just clean it up and stay organized. Stacks for uh, for your Mac. And uh, and sorry. And the way uh, that it happens is you simply right click. You want to right click not on any of these icons. You want to right click where there's nothing. So that's why you see that my right clicking is happening over here, out where there's nothing. You right click and then you click on the option that says use stacks. There you go. See that you can't read it very well, but that's what that says. Use stacks and the magic will happen. Very cool. I really like stacks. All right. We're going to go ahead and talk now about uh, Windows and actually being able to have a split screen on your Mac, especially um, this is not as helpful when you're working with a 13 inch Mac uh, or even a, uh, a 15 or 16 inch Mac. But if you have, you know, a 21 inch iMac or a 27 inch iMac, this can be very helpful. And this feature allows you to display two screens with two different applications or two two win sorry two windows uh, with either two different applications or maybe two windows of the same application to um, I think to get this to work you have to understand a little bit about these icons on here you know that in every app uh, every uh, app in MacBook you see these three icons I'm going to show you really quickly see that there they are those three right there and uh, the red one simply closes the window remember, Closing the window doesn't mean that you've quit the program. So you could close all your windows and at the bottom on your dock, it will still show that Chrome is running. So you have not quit the app, you've just closed that window. The yellow one minimizes the window and when it minimizes, what it does is it very quickly throws it down here into this section, uh, into this section down here. And that way you can come back to it when you click uh, when you when you want it. You click down here when you uh, and it will uh, it will bring it back up. So that's what minimizing the window does. And finally, full screen, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, it's full screen. Notice that it doesn't show my dock. It doesn't show unless I come down here. Then it shows it. It doesn't show my uh, my menu bar unless I go to the top. Then it shows it. So that's what full screen does. And you need to know about this in order to use split screen. So the way that split screen works is um, when you hover over the green, um, the green full screen icon on here, you will see these three, uh, these three options. Enter full screen, which is where, where I'm at right now. 
tile to the left or tile to the right. This simply means that you're going to display two windows and this window that you're in is going to be put to the left. And then after you do that, it'll give you the option to choose which window you want on the right side of your screen. So let me show you how it works. Um, and the way that it works is you simply hover over that, you select where, where you want to put your first window on the left or the right, and then you select which window you want to put on the on the opposite uh, side of the screen. And that's all it takes. So let's see it in action. Okay. So there's no audio here, so I'll be pausing. Uh, I'll be pausing to explain what's going on on here. So let's go ahead and play it on here. So what I wanted to show you here at the beginning is the fact that you see that I'm that I'm moving around. I have two different Chrome windows on here. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do is two different windows. And again, these could be two windows of the same application, or it could be one window of it could be one window of Chrome, and one window of um, you know of uh, let's see here. What's another app that we use on iMovie? So two different apps on here, uh, um, or two of the same, two windows for the same app. So watch what happens here. You're gonna see me hover up to the left hand side there. You see here, there we are. This after about a second, this little dialog box will show up, and then it will ask you. This is the part where it asks you where, where do you want to put it on the left or the right. So I'm gonna click the left here and look what happened on here. So it put this window here on the left. And now it's asking me, well, what do I want on the right-hand side here? So in this case, I want that window. So um, I'm just going to click on the right side of the window, and it will fill up my screen. Okay. Again, I'm working from home, and I don't have a, you know, my big iMac, so I'm using my desktop. So that's why it looks a little bit strange, but it would look better if I had a bigger screen like all of you do on your iMacs on here. So. Um, now, once you have this set up, you can actually adjust the size of each window. So watch just by simply dragging the middle black bar, the bar that you see in the middle on here. You're going to see me do it here. Um, and I'm just showing you, you can navigate between both windows on it. But look, you can kind of choose how big you want each of the windows. OK. A lot of the times when, I have, when I'm having a meet uh, with, uh, you know, with just one individual, I might just one side will be my meet so I can see them, what they can see, and the other one might be what I'm presenting. So uh, again, very, uh, very cool thing. Now to get, when you are done with um, with uh, split screen, you need to go ahead and go up to the top and simply click on the full screen icon and it will exit full screen. And there you go, it'll bring what, that one back. And then you go to the other screen, by the way, what's happening up there, you'll find out in a little bit. You go to the other screen, you uh, you stop the full screen and then it puts everything back to the way it was. So that's the way that split screen works. Uh, it's really cool tool uh, when you have when you don't have two monitors and you want to uh, and, you, and you have a big screen uh, that you can use to display two different windows uh, with the same app or different apps. All right, George. So do you that have any questions. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Yeah. If we have some, why not? Yeah, there are some that are. Um, about updates and um, actually the quicker one is probably about stacks. You mentioned how things get stacked on your desktop, but where do all those yeah. files go is the question. Okay, well, let me show you really quick. I'm gonna show you live, okay? So here's my um, here's my screen, right? Notice how clean and organized this. I'm going to go ahead and click here, turn off stacks are being used. So I'm gonna click that to uncheck it and look what happens here. There's all my work. now. All it does is, and you got to watch this carefully on here, use stacks. All it does is it puts them in stacks. Now, over here on the left-hand side, I have 13 items under images, two music files, eight movies. And when I click here, if I click there, watch what happens. It expands my 13 images. See what it did? So they don't go anywhere. They just get organized on your desktop. I hope that answers the question, Celia. Thank you. Um, next mm -hmm. question is about when you update uh, Mrs. De Leon a VRB. Um, I'm not, maybe George will be able to, to decipher, but if we misunderstand, please let us know right back in. But the question is, when I update my computer, should I sync or not? My computer is synced to my laptop and it's older. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, unsure on the question because uh, syncing usually has to do with uh, with Google Chrome and making sure that you sync all the settings. I, I'm a little bit confused. Maybe she could write back in and clarify that a little bit. Definitely. OK. Yeah, um, we'll, have, we'll have time at the end. We can go over that one later if she uh, does another one. At Chavez, um, actually, and I don't, we, we probably should mention this, that 
just that we've heard from people that there, there are some like filtering issues with the new IMAX for some people that um, they can't get to Gmail, they can't get to YouTube, they can't, like there's just certain configurations that aren't working quite right. Um, Ms. Mejia, that's probably the issue that you're having who can't, she can't get to um, the live stream on the IMAX. So um, you're gonna have to put in a help ticket to IT so that they can they can get that squared away. So if anybody's having any issues like that, submit a help text ticket. Um, and the last question, George, is from Mrs. Granger Maneo. Have you mm -hmm. She says that she has an older desktop and she's asking, is it okay to update the OS? In other words, how do we know which OS to take it up to? Because she's heard that older Macs might not support the newest OS. Just as you know, when you try when you try to update uh, Mac to the OS, it will it, it will tell you whether it can be updated anymore. So you can try to update it to the next operating system, and um, and do that, and that's fine. And then when it gets to the point, it'll tell you, you know um, this Mac, and I've seen that on a couple of really old uh, MacBooks where it says this this computer can't be updated anymore. So um, yeah, I would I would give it a shot. Try to bring it up to the newest. OS and uh, and it'll it's not like you can put something on there that you that that doesn't work with that computer it won't let you install it. So George, also to Miss Granger um, and anyone else. So you you specifically mentioned a 2012 desktop, um, and uh, I don't know if that's your own personal desktop at at home. When I work from home, I'm using my own personal desktop uh, just because it was already set up. But uh, the district did buy the new. 20, what are they, George? 21 inch, 21 inch mm -hmm. iMac for yeah, every inch. single teacher. So if you are using your own, you you should feel free to go in and, and get the new one because we did buy enough for, for every single teacher and, and then some to make sure all the staff who were working from home, all the certificated staff who were working from home had what they needed. Um, I don't know that we, she maybe meant laptop. If you did mean laptop, you, you might wanna see if there's a newer, a MacBook Air for you because even though the MacBook Airs that we bought everyone were older, I see I think they're still 2015, which is still three years older and it will be higher spec. So Miss Granger, that's just something to think about. There's no reason when the district has new or better hardware for you to work to keep working on it. And if it is your own computer and you are working more and more on it, that's wear and tear on your own stuff, which I mean at the most you could write off on taxes. But again, we we made sure to buy enough we had the COVID money to do that so please do take advantage of it don't struggle under older hardware and older technology when there's really no reason to do it it's it's not a matter of convenience or inconveniencing anyone here uh, i view that as a matter of giving you the best tools to serve our students so you're not being selfish you're actually uh, upholding what you need so that you can best serve our, our students thank you josh good point thank you for that all right. So, any, Sally, was there any other questions besides that one? I think we're good. Okay, good. We're going to go ahead and move forward on here and go to the next piece on here. And this is, you know, how to take charge of your uh, of your computer, your desktop. And we're going to go ahead and cover two main pieces on here, uh, Launchpad and Mission Control. So I wanted to, uh, my computer looks different, so I wanted to kind of go ahead and show you some of the differences. Most of you probably have this icon here. This is called the Launchpad in Catalina. And in Big Sur, when that update happens for all of you, if you don't have it yet, this is what it will look like. So yeah, that's called Launchpad. And what Launchpad allows you to do is, um, is it's a quick way for you to access all your applications. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. So when I go down here, here's my Launchpad. Look what happens when I click on it. Can you see my screen hopefully still? So yeah, yes? Yes. Okay, okay great. So this is my, uh, this is my uh, you know, when I, again, when I click on Launchpad, it takes me here, and then I have access to all my apps on here. See, I have two pages. A couple of things to note. Number one is I can search for an, for an app. So if you have a lot of apps, I can search for it. So if I want iMovie, I simply start typing it up, and it will show up. Um, the second thing to note is down here at the bottom, you will see that there's two little dots. That means that you have two pages of apps. Okay, very, very uh, much like the iPhone if you are an iOS user. So yeah, so again, you can uh, you can switch between the two. Now, I'm gonna show you this a little bit ahead of time because I mentioned it earlier, but since I'm here, I might as well do it. You can take any of these apps on here. For example, occasionally you may need to use Firefox, Firefox for whatever reason. 
you can actually just click on it. Oops, sorry, my, oh, my apologies there. Click on it. Oh, did I open it? I'm sorry. Ah, that's not good. Uh, not now here, I'm sorry here. All right, am I still there, Sally? I'm okay. You can see everything okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. So click launch pad. And I want Firefox, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then see how I'm dragging it? I can First of all, I can reorder them, but I can also bring it straight down to my dock. See, I can put it in here wherever I want. There you Oops, there it is. It's already on here. Now, if there's something that you don't want to use, you can click right-click on it, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then you can click on here on, look at the options that you have on there. I'm going to click Options, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove it from the dock. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and it'll remove it from my dock. Well, maybe it's because it's open, it won't do that. But let's take a look on there. Now it removed it. So I don't want news, click on it, options, remove from dock. See that? And now that is gone. You heard the little um, going away uh, sound effect. There we go. So that's the launch pad again, a very easy way for you to get all your apps. I know some of us, we click on our Mac, we go into apps, then we find them in there. This using launch pad will get you right to the app more quickly. On the other, uh, the other piece that we have on here is what's called mission control. And mission control, what it allows you to do is it allows you to use multiple desktops. And um, multiple desktops uh, is what you keep seeing me do on here. Watch, watch what happens here. See that? I have all these desktops, five desktops. I don't need that many, but I have five right now that I wanted to show you. So that is actually mission control. And just a little um, a little tip for you on here. When I was in the classroom, um, I used uh, I used mission control. And this is just a tip for you. On one window, I would have my lesson plan. In a second window, I would have all my math resources. In the third window, I would have all my ELA, all my all the stuff that way. I have it there prepared. I'm ready to use it when it's time to do to do that you know, to teach that subject. So that's just a little tip on how I used it. So um, I wanted to show you that a um, couple of things you need to know. You have to set this up. Um, you have to set this up in, um, in the settings. And also, if you want to add additional windows, you, you will see a little plus icon up here at the top, on the top right with the plus that allows you to add them. So let me show you live actually how this works on here. So here we go. If I wanted to add a window, look, I can add another one. Now, if you have too many and you want to close it up, once you hover over one of these desktops, you will see the X show up. You see that little X that just showed up up there? Let's see if it'll do it. it looks like it doesn't do it when I zoom in, but there's the X. I don't want this window, close it up. I don't want this window, close it up. So you can decide how many desktops you want. Just being aware that the more desktops you have open, the more resources that are going to be taken up from your computer. So. Uh, Again, be aware that if you see your computer stuttering, uh, you know, not running as smooth as it should, it could be because you have too many desktops open. But honestly, with your computers, um, probably running three or four of them shouldn't be an issue, especially if you're using your um, your new iMacs, which were pretty souped up so that you wouldn't have too many issues with that. That's well, called, uh, go ahead, Celia. Sorry. Can you um, remind us how to get to mission control? So Mr. Leon is asking from VRB. Um, I think you just showed how to add in another uh, desktop, which is one question, but she was also wondering, like going back to the split screen, when you uns when you go out of full screen, it gets you back to one window, but then the sec mm -hmm. second window can be stuck in that second desktop. And so she's yep. wondering, how do I get to that second desktop? So maybe, mm -hmm remind people how to get to mission control or the different yeah. desktop. Which is, which is, thank you, Sally, which is actually, um, you know, re related to kind of what I'm doing. There's two ways to do it, but the easy way is on your MacBooks, I believe you have an F and a function key. And then I believe um, it said F, uh, it said above the six button. I'm sorry, I, I don't have my uh, my computer on there, but Sally, you do. It's, is it above the, um, the six that you see like a little, you see like a little symbol that has like multiple windows like this. Is that correct, Celia? Am I remembering that correct? F3. F3, so it's a function, an F3. Oh, there we go, uh, yeah, F3. What, what'll happen is that does the same thing as what, uh, what's happening with me right now. It'll bring this up, right? And then from here, just so you know, I can switch over to any window. Look, I can switch between the windows very easily just by clicking, uh, just by clicking on the different ones. Um, is that what you're referring to, Celia, how to access that? Upset? Would you? You're yeah. you, you're going to use the function key, the F three key. 
you will see I a little I to use these, but yeah, it just yeah. depends on. Yeah, what I'm using is, and this is not for today's training, what I'm using is are called hot corners that are, that do certain things. When you go to the corner, that's why it's happening when I go to my left-hand corner, right? But the F, the function uh, F3 key will bring up the, will bring up the same thing. We'll bring, uh, okay. Hopefully that answered it, Celia. So that is uh, mission control. And um, the last piece that I wanna go ahead and talk about is, you know, you're ready for some peace and quiet, right? You're done for the night, or maybe you're gonna start a Google Meet uh, and you want to stop all those noises, those things, notifications, emails, things popping up while you're in a meet, right? You Maybe you don't want some of that stuff to be shown to who you're having a meet with, right? So um, there's two things that you can do to help you with that. We have notifications that are built into Mac OS. We have notifications also built into Hangouts. I figured I would show this since this is one of our key uh, tools and I wanna make sure that you're aware of that. So let's start with the Mac OS uh, notifications. Okay, on the top right-hand corner, and it looks different for me because again, I'm on a, on a newer OS, it's gonna change when you update to uh, Big Sur. There's this icon that looks like just, you know, like a list, like a bulleted list on here. When you click there, it's going to take you to this dialog box. Now this dialog box, um, what I've noticed is when I click on that, I don't see today and notifications. It's kind of like hidden. So if you scroll to the top of the screen, you should see today and notifications. You want to click on notifications, and then you have uh, you have these options on here. Um, I'm not going to talk about night shift. I'm going to talk about do not disturb. If you flick that over, you know um, it means that you won't be getting any notifications that are coming in through the operating system with emails and um, other applications. So do not disturb does that. Um, and just a little bit of a preview, um, you know, once you update to Big Sur you actually can tell it to not disturb for an hour, for three hours until this evening, until tomorrow morning. So you actually have more flexibility. You'll have more flexibility if you, uh, if you up, once, you, uh, once you're able to update to uh, Mac OS Big Sur. But that is what turns off the system notifications, okay? We have also what are called Hangout notifications. If you just want to mute those, if you use Hangouts a lot, which our department does, um, what you wanna do is you wanna go to this uh, you want to go to this uh, oops, website. Oops, what's going on here? Sorry. You want to go to this website here, hangouts.google.com. It's also down here at the bottom. Okay. And you're going to get to all your Hangout conversations if it's something that you use. You want to click on the stack of pancakes. I believe that's what some people call this. Yes. And <laughs> Celia. Celia calls it that. I don't know about me. But uh, once you get in there, there'll be some other settings at the top, but you want to go down to the bottom where you see this little gear and you see more settings. Once you get in here, you want to go down to the notifications section on here. And uh, you have a couple of things. First of all, if uh, you can turn off just sounds, if you know that ding, 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 that keeps that keeps happening sometimes when you, uh, when you are uh, in a meet with your students or whatever, you can turn that off so you, there's no sound. Okay, but if you click on mute notifications for, and then this drop down arrow, remember that very important arrow there that gives you more options, you will see these kinds of options. Mute it for an hour, mute it for two hours. So usually what I do, if I know I'm going to have a meet, like right now I'm in this, uh, I'm in this presentation, I don't want things coming in, I just mute it for two hours. And then after two hours, it automatically uh, come, you know, uh, starts allowing notifications again. So it's a very cool tool so that, uh, you know, you can get some peace and quiet or perhaps you're, uh, when you want to go into, a, a, you know, a video meeting with somebody. And that's uh, notifications for you. This is the part where I get to hand it off to Sally, unless we want to take some questions, Sally, before we kind of hand it off to you uh, to cover the second half of our presentation. Um, there have been some questions, but I, I, um, I feel like these might be individual questions, and so I'm going to address them. But um, to both Ms. Chavez and Ms. Cameron, um, Freema and VRB, respectively, um, they're asking about how to see the students, see all of your students in a Google Meet while you're presenting. And so there are a couple of considerations to take in mind. Like some people have been using an extension. Some people are using a second monitor or a second device. 
And so the solution there can be very different, which is why I say um, if either of you wanna um, either write to us or drop in for office hours, we would be happy to walk you through some options that is best for you and your situation. Yeah. Um, we can definitely do that. Um, and I think that was it. Um, Anna at VRB was asking about um, configuring and setting up the mouse on her computer. And it's like, we totally paid her to ask that question awesome. because Miss on the wild, it's coming up, stay tuned. Um, but anyway, I think that was it. All right, it's all yours. Take on over, Celia. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna take over from settings here on out. Um, let me check the time, okay. And so one of those things we're actually gonna, like, that's what I'm saying, like, look, people, it's like, we totally set it up this way, I know, um, is talking about your mouse. And so to get to any of these settings, you're probably gonna wanna start at the settings on your computer. Um, and it, you know, we, we like purposely picked kind of a few things because <laughs> like George would tell you when I was like working on this, I'd like, I feel like this is like, a rabbit hole. I'd like start looking at something and then I'm like, oh my gosh, there are like all these options. I'm like, what is that? I don't even know what that is. I want to learn. And like, there are a lot of options, a lot of customizable things. We picked out a few of these things um, to point out. So you might want to check in on a couple of these things. But here's the first thing about your mouse. And just a tip. The tip about the mouse is that your mouse is very customizable. Like George had also started off by saying, like, just depends on what you like. But anyway, uh, make sure we're, we're gonna go through some of the options and just make sure that you um, set it up for whatever works for you. And so in the setting um, page of your computer, one of the options is a mouse. If you have access to a track pack, for example, I know some people prefer it, I don't but some people do, you would look through similar settings um, under the trackpad option. But since we all have mouse, we're gonna talk about the mouse. Um, and so speaking specifically at the, about the mouse, once you're in the menu for your mouse, you're gonna have a couple of things. Um, you're, and also keep in mind that I'm running Catalina. And so again, if you've already updated to Big Sur like George, it looks a little different for you. But these are my screenshots from my computer. And so um, once you're inside the mouse menu, I'm going to call attention that there's two kind of pages to this. A point and click page has these customizing options, the scroll direction. So if you, depending on which way is intuitive for you, you write the scrolling motion can be opposite of what would you would like. And so it, Check that, play it with both ways and see which one you prefer. The secondary click is your right click. And so a lot of times some people are like, well, wait, my mouse is not right clicking. Check this setting because I, like, I, these are my settings. And so for a right click, a secondary click, I just click on the right side of my mouse. That's how I want it. It makes sense to me. But if you uh, want to change that, or maybe your computer just has that as a default as something else and you're like, no, I want it to be click on the right side. Make sure you change the option right here in the little drop down menu, the little carrot. Um, and a smart zoom is a small, very quick little zoom option. Um, so me zooming in right now like this is not smart zoom. That's something else I'll mention. But if I wanna do a smart zoom, and I'm on my calendar and I just click on a document, probably gonna be on a document. It, do you see how it like moves it very, very like, depending on what you're hovering over, it's a quick up and back. That's me clicking two times on my mouse, twice and then back. Um, if you want that option, you can turn it on. If you don't want that option, don't turn it on. Again, it's just customizing. Um, it also, you can adjust the speed of um, how your mouse tracks. Again, just some people like to move slow, more slowly, some a little more quickly. Try it out, feel it out um, to see what works for you. 
George, feel free to interrupt me with questions if there are any. I was going to make the comment that the cool thing that you don't see there is that anytime you want to change those settings, it's a little video that shows what happens, right? How it works. So that's really True. cool. Pay attention yeah. to that. Yeah, I just took screenshots, but this image back here in the background, it's actually animated. And so it'll show you and like the screen up top, it'll, it gives you examples of like what is what exactly you're, you're changing. True. Um, the second page for your mouse are more gestures that you can use with your mouse. Again, if you just don't want to use them, if you end up finding that your mouse is doing things that you're like, wait, what did I just do? I didn't mean to do that. It's probably because you're doing some kind of gesture with your fingers on the mouse because you have these on. I find some of them helpful and some of them not. As you can see, I don't have between pages because I don't, I just don't use pages like that. It just, it doesn't work for me. I do, however, scroll between full size apps or desktops. And so the, for me to switch desktops, again, like George said, I can just go to F3 to bring up mission control. Sure. For me, it's easier to just switch back and forth using my fingers. And so I swipe with two fingers left and right to go back and forth to my desktops. It works for me. Maybe it doesn't for you. Turn it off. It's okay. Um, and if you want to get to mission control, again, mission control, I can just use the F keys. I can use icon. Uh, but I can, if you have this enabled, you can just double tap with two fingers and it'll bring up mission control. All options, not necessary. Um, but again, make sure that if you want them on, that it's configured the way you want them. Try them out. Get used to it because there is a little bit of adjustment period and you're like, wait, well, how do I switch to the desktops? Was it one finger? Was it two fingers? But with practice, you'll, it'll start to, to click, pun intended. Um, a quick little note about um, cursors because we're talking about the mouse, right? Um, in case you hadn't ever noticed, this is just a quick little note that the cursor changes depending on what you're doing, looking at, manipulating, and so it changes. Um, usually when your cursor is an arrow, you're selecting something, um, clicking just generally. If you have this cursor, you're in a field where you can type. If you have this cursor with a little hand, you can usually uh, click on something that's like a hyperlink and it's clickable to send you somewhere. Um, this cursor is usually something that can be repositioned. So like think of an image in a Google slideshow. If you click on it, you can reposition it with this cursor. Um, and then this last one is resizing arrows. Um, if you ever like grab an image at the corner or at the sides, you'll get little arrows, sometimes um, arrows on both sides, sometimes an arrow just on one side, but it's um, <sighs> resizing um, the whatever um, element that you have selected. So again, just something to keep in mind that'll it'll help you maneuver and understand the interface a little bit more. Some um, accessibility notes. Um, again, starting at the, your system settings, um, the next tip is to take a, a good minute or 20 to look through some of these accessibility settings. Um, they, they're categorized by the area of support that they help. And so once you have it opened, um, you'll see that the window has it categorized on the left-hand side. Again, this is Catalina. If you're on Big Sur, it's, it looks different. But um, the settings are grouped by the area that they support. So like these are support your vision, these your hearing. Um, if you scroll, there's more. Um, I'm gonna point out a couple of them, but there are a lot of them. Um, the first one is uh, Zoom. So under vision, there's an option for Zoom. This is something you need to enable. So it probably isn't defaulted to, but you can turn it on and it enables you to zoom in and out on anything in your screen. And that's what George and I use when we do this. And they're like, no, let's go over here. That's probably a little too much zooming, but um, 
that's what Georgia and I are using when we have to like zoom in. Like I'm gonna zoom into this to mention that Georgia's awesome and he had previously made um, a screencast uh, walking you through the, kind of the options on how to set that up. So if you're interested in, in taking a closer look at that, if you click here, the bottom, you'll get a link to that video. But in order to use this Zoom feature, you need to enable it, and then you need to uh, select the key that you wanna click while you Zoom. For me, it's control, but there are different options here. You can do like option or command. Again, you might at first when you start using this, you're like, wait, what was the key to Zoom? I can't remember. Trust that, again, with more practice and more use, it'll get better. I used to have trouble with this one. I'd be like, wait, let me click all the keys until now it, it's um, a little more automatic, I would say. Um, the cursor. That was just a 10 minute warning. Sorry, Celia. Okay, yeah. Feel free, yeah. Feel free to say it. So I'm like, I heard something, but yeah. Um, there are two things about the cursor. So the cursor is under vision and display. Click on the second little page here for cursor. And there's two things kind of what I want to point out. Do you guys ever like you're doing something and the cursor is so small that you're like, where is my cursor right now? Like, I don't even know where I am on the page because it's gone. It's too small. If you ever lose it, there's this little option here, if you have it enabled, to shake your cursor, like I just did right now. <laughs> if you just shake it, it temporarily makes it larger. And so if it's just lost and you're like, where is it? I shake it, it gets a little bit bigger so that you're like, oh, there it is, found it. Um, so you might wanna try that out. And two, adjusting the cursor size. Like my cursor's all the way at the largest because we have so many of these like trainings and presentations that I do that I just, I like it larger. Um, but again, if um, pointing things out for your students, I would probably say that having it the largest is a good thing, but it does take some, some getting used to, like again, all these other settings. Um, there's also some supports for um, color blindness. And I just wanna make the point that like, although these are, Kind of the intention behind them is to support um, anybody with color blindness. Um, like I've changed this, so there's a you can do a color filter on your screen, and so to get to the color filters, you go under vision, click on display, and it's the third page right after cursors. You can enable them or disable them, and then click on the type of filter, um, which corresponds to like certain types of color blindness, but. Um, Keep in mind that one, the filter is only for you. And so what I've done sometimes is I'll just, I'll use the filters just to like help my eyes sometimes. Um, just keep in mind that those filters are just for you. And so sometimes I'll be like working on a presentation and I think that like the color that I'm, I'm seeing is the way my audience will see it. If I have color filters on that, that's not true because the filters are just for you and your screen. And so I might be doing something that looks pink to me, but to my audience, it's going to look different because I have a filter on. But um, again, it's fully customizable. The intensity is also adjustable um, for anybody who may need it. Sticky keys. I always mention sticky keys because I know I will soon need sticky keys. Like it, um, Sticky keys is a setting. Go under motor, keyboard, and then just, I don't have it enabled, but um, once you do, you just click to enable it. And sticky keys enables you to um, use key combinations sequentially instead of simultaneously. For example, if I need to cut and paste something, the shortcut on my keyboard is command C and then command V. Command C, I have to push at the same time simultaneously. If I have sticky keys enabled, I can push command, let it go, and the, the computer will recognize that it's sticking that key that you just let go. 
to the next one. And so I can push Command, let it go, with one hand, C, let it go. And if sticky keys are enabled, then the, the computer will recognize what you're trying to do by sticking those keys together. It's very helpful. Like think of like things that like, do you ever take a um, partial screenshot to your clipboard? That's like four keys I need to push all together simultaneously at the same time. It just, it helps. So if um, anybody wants to try that out, I would highly suggest it. It's one of my favorite things ever. Okay, last note about some apps. Um, we're not going to get into how to use these apps, but I just wanted to give you some, a little bit of insight into like what they might be good for. Um, and there's three of them. They're all native to your iMacs. They're free, so you don't have to download anything. They're there. Um, the first time being QuickTime. So QuickTime is ideal for any kind of like recording, video, audio, or screen recording. Once you open QuickTime, the icon looks like this in the upper right hand. You get this menu, and you just click new movie, new audio, new screen recording. It, it is fairly simple to use. If you have a movie recording, um, it'll use your webcam. Start, stop recording button. Again, the interface is fairly simple. Um, if you do an audio recording, you'll get this little menu. Again, start recording, stop recording. Um, and screen recordings are probably the ones that have a little bit more options to them. You get this, um, the, this menu down here at the bottom. And so it is like you can do, um, you actually can do screenshots from here too. You can do recordings of your whole screen, recordings of only a certain area of your screen. And then you get all these options. Like, do you want a timer? Which microphone are you using? Where do you want to save it? And then the record button. Um, we have other things to do this with, like Screencastify. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes we need a plan B. And so, again, it's just for you to know that, like, my Screencastify is not working and I really need to screen record something, then you have a plan B. Um, so QuickTime would probably be best for those things. Preview is the second app. Uh, Preview's icon looks like this in the top right hand of my screen. It's probably ideal for things like screenshots, quick, simple image editing, um, annotating either images or PDFs, and signatures. Um, again, George, being the awesome person that he is, has created this tutorial in video form. So if you're interested in knowing more about preview, I would definitely recommend you check that out. Um, here are just like kind of the, the toolbar. Uh, just keep in mind that for any of these tools here, if you want to sign text, instant alpha is awesome. If you don't know what instant alpha is, come find us at office hours so I can tell you about it. Uh, but to get to any of those, you need to make sure that you click on the markup tool. So this little pen is the toggle for all the markup tools. And so make sure that you, you're there for any of that. Um, last note about preview is if you open a PDF in preview, like generally speaking, you default to, there's a little sidebar where you can rearrange pages of a PDF. If you ever wanna like cut out pages and you're like, you know what, I just need the first two pages, get rid of everything else. You can delete them from here. And so there's this little nifty sidebar um, in preview. Again, free, already on your computer. It's great. Last but not least, iMovie. iMovie is probably best for video editing and publishing, and it, but I will say that it, it does end up having a little bit more bells and whistles for like everyday use, at least in my opinion. But you'll get this interface. You start a new project with either a movie and a trailer. Um, I already have some projects, so I have some other things. And then, again, we're not going to get into how to use iMovie, but um, like a lot of kind of movie creation software, you start layering um, images, video, audio on top of each other um, to create that movie. But again, it's actually very powerful, and there are some situations where George and I um, defer to using this because it is 
it just it is more powerful than kind of the standard video editing that being said two questions celia one of them josh is going to answer because a couple of people oh. have answered which is kind of great but the other one can you show it really quick since you're displaying uh, can you show how to change the resolution on your screen so that it makes text bigger and smaller in the screen settings because uh, there was a question that came in and we didn't really cover that the and resolution in the screen so go to the apple apple top left hand corner i believe that's what mr aragon i think that's what you were talking about mr aragon so click the apple on the left hand side there, no, there you go there you go there you go. You're in the settings. Now go to the screen uh, display. Sorry, display settings. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? There you go. Is that and, right? then see, uh, and then go to uh, see the, the scale. See where it says scale? Mm -hmm. Click there. And then see how you show, uh, see how you, what happens there? You can choose how big you want the text to be. So if you click on the different, look what happens on there. So this, hopefully, Mr. Aragon, that's what you were just wanted to know is how do you increase that? I know that some of our eyes kind of run into trouble as you get older. So there, there's an option for you. But that yeah. was that question. Um, and I'll, I know Josh was going to answer the last two, which are the same yeah. question. Also, George, stop, stop calling our teachers old on the live stream. Um, I was talking about me. Oh, oh sure you are. Okay. I, Pretty, my apologies, Mr. Aragon. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, in any case, both Ms. Cameron uh, and Ms. Rodriguez from VRB and MLK respectively asked about mouse battery. So first off, you got a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse that came with your iMac and they both have rechargeable batteries already contained in them. So do you replace the batteries? No, because the batteries are built in and they are integral to the mouse. Um, if uh can tell you just to make my picture larger can you stop presenting for a second oh i didn't realize you were presenting but yes i can do that i'm, I'm not going to present what i'm I, i'm going to hold something up to the camera old-fashioned style ah. um and i'm going to turn off my blurred background so you can see my messy office so if you look at the bottom of your mouse uh first off your imac came with a a a big charger that plugs into the computer itself and then it should have come with a small cord that actually is called a lightning cable and it looks like what you would charge an iphone with it has a a, a small um, little power cable so if you look at the bottom of your mouse you'll see the on off switch the optical receptor and then depending on uh, i think my one at home has the chart this is the charge port of my mouse in the office this is actually george's mouse and then i think my one at home has it up closer to the top but there is a charge port and you plug it in there and I would plug it in overnight. And honestly, a, a charge on these, one of these things should last you a few months. But since we're talking about this, um, you all have probably a silver keyboard. I have a black one, but this is my keyboard. If you look up at the top, you have your on off button, which you might not have realized you had an on off button. And then in the dead middle at the top, there's a charge port and it's the same thing. So every once and again, your keyboard and your mouse are going to need to be recharged. If you if you notice, you're suddenly like, the mouse keeps losing connection or the keyboard keeps losing connection. The battery on them is probably low and they probably need to be charged. That happens in the middle of the day, a quick 15 minute charge, 10 minute charge should get you through the rest of the day and then plug them in overnight. Um, they really, like you could probably charge every other month, every two months and you'll be fine. Um, but but yes, you, you do need to um, just be aware of that. There is a way to display um, a, in the Bluetooth settings at the top where you can just mouse over and see what the battery percentage and the keyboard percentage are. And those are a good thing to sort of, to not be surprised by in the middle of a lesson. So that said, um, now I keep moving this mouse that is George's and not connected to my computer and nothing's happening. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and Mr. Leon, thank you so much for saying thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Escobar at uh, VRB, um, you can either talk to George Celia about going more in depth on iMovie, or maybe Lucy, your um, your ETL there at VRB can, can help you out. But uh, thank you very much. Don't forget that if we uh, didn't cover something today that you really wanted, or you really have a burning question and you feel like, it might be a little uh, particular to you. That's what open office hours are for to get in-depth one-on-one support. Um, I don't, I think we've pretty much covered all the questions. 
So we've run over a little bit. There's still 97 of you watching. Thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, have a great three-day weekend. Happy Lunar New Year. Happy Valentine's Day. As we say at the end of every one of these, be good to each other, be good to yourselves, and be good to our kids. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.